scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. A formula for long life is there a principle is there some sort of guarantee please pay attention tonight can a man actually make a bold claim about longevity or are we to just walk and hope that someday death will just come and whenever it comes it can take us this has been a great source of confusion in the body of Christ. There are those who are of the opinion that, um, you know, this is what the Bible says and this and that. And there are others who have all kinds of stories, you know, of well-meaning, loving believers, pastors, ministers of the gospel who have died. And um, in all kinds of things, sicknesses have claimed the lives of people accidents acts of terrorism and so on and so forth and so this the complexity of death is something that in spite of the civilization of mankind and the many centuries of evolution it's a question that has been at the heart of almost everyone what is the guarantee that this may not be my last night what is the guarantee that i can plan for 20 years and successfully execute it this has led many people for instance into being irresponsible because they feel there is no point laboring going to school paying the price getting a job getting married having kids and then dying and leaving people and so on and so forth and others have um, come up with all kinds of formula i can tell you even for ministers of the gospel it's been a difficult subject um, to teach congregations because as a minister of the gospel you are exposed to all the sides of life you have to attend funerals you have to comfort families at the same time um, you will have to be there at baby the birth of new ones dedications marriages and all of that so on one side you have your members crying at the transition of one and then on one side they are celebrating the incoming of another on one side there is a divorce happening on another side people are celebrating the bliss of marriage so all of these these extremities make um, the work of ministry particularly very difficult hallelujah and we must be able to draw strength from the truth of God's Word so tonight as instructed by the Lord I want to teach us certain things I want us to discuss on the subject of longevity to give us hope courage and to build faith in us say amen before i start like i said earlier on let me express my heartfelt condolence to many of us who have at one point or the other 
experience the demise of a loved one i can tell you this that it is really really very painful there are people who have lost father others mothers others both parents others you know and if i'm to ask every one of us to come and hold the mic and say one or two things many of us may have tear dropping stories tragic memories of things that happened surrounded the death of our loved ones and so on and so forth and um the goal tonight is not to get us emotional the goal tonight is not to um create a lot of questions in our mind and create a platform for debate the goal tonight is an attempt to look from the vista of the word of god and draw up keys to be able to guide us and to show us like a compass that there is a pathway to longevity hallelujah praise the lord psalm 91 verse 16 you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever i am afraid i will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord I will trust in you Trust in you. So let the weak say, I, I am strong in the strength of the Lord. He is your hand. You always fill your heart with songs of deliverance whenever you are afraid you should trust in him that's what he expects you should trust in him Let the weak say, I am strong in the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share a few thoughts. Number one, the first thing I want us to know about. Let's start from Jeremiah 29. Let's start from there. Jeremiah 29. Let's be fast. There are lots of scriptures we're going to look at because I want to establish a few things. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Are we there? Okay. One to read everyone is projected. This is the part that I want us to focus on tonight. To give you a what? An expected end. A predictable end. Please listen to me. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. These thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts of good. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any good report, if there be any virtue and, and any praise, he said, think on these things. And so God is saying, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. 
He said they are thoughts of good and not of evil. This is God speaking. And those thoughts are particularly designed to give you an expected end. A predictable end. Not an unexpected end. Not an unpredictable end. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The thoughts that I think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Hallelujah. Point number one. The first point I want us to get tonight is that God's desire and plan for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. God's desire and God's plan for us, according to scripture, is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Psalm 91 verse 16, please, very quickly. Write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures. God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Psalm 91 verse 16, please. Everyone read, one, two, read. One more time. This is the Bible. This is the truth of God's word. It says, for with long life, will I give him? Did he say, will I give him? That means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity. Are you getting blessed? It says, for with long life, will I satisfy him? And in it, I will show him my salvation. Number two, Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. Please, media, you'll be really fast. You'll help us. There are lots of scriptures to look at. And all of them are important. We're establishing the first point tonight. That it is God's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Exodus 23, verse 26. 23, 26. Hallelujah. Everyone read. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of thy days. There is an appointment with long life. There is an appointment from the throne. From eternity before you came. And it says the number of your days, I will fulfill it. So that's the first point I want us to establish tonight. And listen, people, I want you to realize that um, I'm a human being. I understand that many of us are receiving this point with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of God's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to mourn the transition of our dear one but the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled a believer is not just one who has given his heart to the lord a believer is one who has submitted to the authority of god's word as the final say regardless of your experience this is what makes you a believer is you are not a believer just because you were born again you are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of god take precedence and become the final authority over your life say amen do you believe what i'm teaching you you must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven you are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband even if she does not like the way he's behaving even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage her covenant of being with him will force her to submit sometimes he may beat her 
he may be a foolish man but she has chosen as a submissive wife that i will submit to his authority and i will bear his son name that's what it means to be a believer to be a believer is not to love god when you can explain things to be a believer is that in the midst of your joy in the midst of your tears in the midst of your clarity in the midst of confusion regardless of what happens in your life the word of god stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life is god speaking to us are we growing as believers this is a very mature teaching tonight if you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of god above your life you will backslide and you will run away from god that's why we have many atheists today many of them were church children many of them were folks in baptist and presbyterian churches but their lives were surrounded by so much confusion and because they think that god has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds after a prolonged period of disappointment that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits and their conclusion is that god is a liar and their conclusion is that the bible is not true their conclusion is something is wrong there is a deceit somewhere but the bible says the lord is gracious and compassionate He's slow to anger rich in love from everlasting to everlasting he says thou art God hallelujah it is God's desire for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest do you believe that point number two make sure you're writing point number two the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time the Bible did not hide it from us. It didn't leave it as a secret. It's clearly stated in the Bible that it is possible that although this is the desire, it is absolutely possible, supported by scripture, that a man can die before his time. Open bracket and write this. Especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life this is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight but it will test your love for God the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time Ecclesiastes seven seventeen. quickly Ecclesiastes 7 17 and Psalm 55 verse 23 we'll look at those Ecclesiastes 7 17 the Bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted not only can the life be cut short the Bible shows us that someone's life can be added to and someone's life can be subtracted 7 17 Ecclesiastes hallelujah okay let's just let's just turn while they're trying to help her okay hallelujah go ahead and read everyone one to read why should thou die before your time we're still going to revisit this verse it says be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why should thou what die it's a question it's just the, the b part i want us to focus on why is a question that means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions the same way god designed for everyone to be prosperous the bible says that um how did he put it now he says the proceed of the earth is for the profit in of all but there are people today who love god and they are still poor is that true there are people today who love god and cannot afford to feed their children but it does not stop the fact that god is a loving god and he has shown a formula for prosperity why should 
thou die before your time so the bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time psalm 55 verse 23 55 verse 23 are we there all right go ahead and read everyone those outside we apologize looks like they are not seeing the projection but just follow us very carefully one to read shall bring them down into the pit of destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what half their days they will not even live up to half their days now forget that he's talking about wicked people. I'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added, can be cut short, can be multiplied, can be divided, can be subtracted. This is the infallible word of God. Hallelujah. So although God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest, the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Point number three. This is a hard one now. Receive grace to receive it. Ready? The Bible re reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. Write it down. The Bible reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time isaiah 65 verse 20 hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold you down you are the reason Lord you're seated in majesty reveals painfully but truly that God is never behind us dying before our time 65 verse 20 of Isaiah go ahead and read one to read nor an old man that had not what go ahead and read This is the prophet speaking the mind of God to the people of God. He says, there shall be no more infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days. For a child shall die a hundred years old. 
brothers and sisters the bible says but as many as believed him he gave them power to become as many as believed him he gave them power to become hallelujah one more scripture ezekiel 18 verse 32 Ezekiel Go ahead and read. One to read. Stop. For what? One more time. One more time. This is God speaking. One more time. Read on. Do you believe this? Please, listen, 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 listen. I'm a human being. Are you getting me? I understand the reality. I understand the pain. I, I understand the gravity. Are you getting me? Of, of um, You will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families. And this is consistent. I have been to mortuaries. I have prayed for people. We have lost loved ones in far and near. And all kinds of things have happened. But I choose to be a believer. I choose to be a believer. I lift my hands in worship. As I sing. Praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Say it who? Say it, prophet Ezekiel saith the lord god wherefore as a result of the above turn yourselves and leave ye next point this is a very serious one and i want us to pay attention to it ready satan comma the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys john 10 10 please satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys write this before we look at the scripture in continuation he has strategies through which he achieves this mission Satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys he has strategies through which he achieves this mission continue writing topmost among the strategies are sicknesses, suicides, accidents. Write it down. Topmost among these strategies are sicknesses. You can write afflictions too. Suicide. Accidents. These are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives. These are his most common strategies. 95%, 95% of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities, suicides, accidents of all sorts, fire, 
all kinds of things destruction john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission the thief cometh not meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this to steal and to kill and to destroy but jesus the son of the living god said i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly the thief satan there are many names that he's given in the bible he's given the serpent he's given the dragon he's given the thief he's called the accuser of the brethren he's called the adversary he's called the destroyer and satan has a strategy please let me have your attention now satan has a strategy there is a series by the grace of god on angels that we are going to be teaching subsequently and under that series of angels i'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels and we are going to examine this man or this entity called satan praise the lord i want us to look very carefully in that series there are a few things about satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits satan is not the most dangerous there are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain they were deliberately not released because the bible says if they are released even the elect will not stand the question is at what point were they bound and what did they do hallelujah when you begin to read don't turn there the book of ezekiel 28 the bible begins to speak of an ancient king we don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels look up many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels no no the word angel comes from the Greek word angelio and it means a messenger. Let me tell you a few things. Look up please. When Ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called Lucifer, the Bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms. Is that true? Is, are, are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? is raising up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre and says thou which subdued nations talked about the making of Satan and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things i think it's important we get this look look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an SUG president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what I'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion 
as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what i'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious capon is still lingering around abu are you getting what i'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what i'm saying he's an illegal occupant he's not a student but he has refused to leave that territory watch out for him he has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students u61 u62 u60 whatever till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of abu are you hearing what i'm saying that abu that's why when you measure it you find out that you are young but they tell you abu is 50 years whereas you are just four years are, are you getting my analogy is it making sense to you when he was the student he was not the most notorious student he was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history there are other notorious students cultists that were driven away are you getting what i'm saying but it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university now watch this let me tell you something i don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us but we'll have that series by the grace of god did you know that angels were once mortal beings are you getting what i'm saying now there was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth their dispensation ended and the ones who are with christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation just like imagine that jesus comes now i hope you know when jesus comes our dispensation is ended but the program of god still proceeds we do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas but we know the bible tells us there is a there is an age to come and there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so I guarantee you, we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization, but not the last as far as creation, as far as, as advancement, as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know. Who knows? Maybe in another dispensation, we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of God, if allowed and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of god in that dispensation they will call us angels i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Now watch this. When we get to heaven, there will not, the Bible does not record, the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven. Is that true? So if in the earth, in my earth life, for instance, this was my wife, these were our children when we get to heaven we all become brothers and sisters are you getting what i'm saying we all become brothers and sisters i can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants and they can look at me and say wow who is this strange being but they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life it is this aberration that was that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation this is what some of the fallen angels taught people 
and taught our forefathers and said forget the people you are seeing now they have been before listen the dispensation before our own there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them there was nothing called invisible and visible that concept did not exist are you getting my point the dispensations before us you could access the heavens and access the earth now it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning so Adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation we never had the opportunity to see what we could do for instance there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction they recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if Adam did not fall and Eve would have had the opportunity because he would still would have given birth you understand he would have given birth in his perfected state we would have seen the son of Adam a womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature that's why in all of the dispensations is only our dispensation that brought Jesus the son of the living God to come and die please let's continue that's for another time I'm just trying to show you that the one you call Satan Lucifer he was once a king in a dispensation hmm. the king of Tyre that ruled upon nations that's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be are you getting me now those spirits together with Satan were the brains behind the building of the Tower of Babel they were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was that was why Solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. Geography today, geography, they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth. They have found ancient castles. Did you know that there was a dispensation where, where we are standing now was water, not land? The same way that place, where is the Mount of Ararat? Where the the ark of Noah rested. Where is it in the earth today? We know Everest to be the highest. Where is Mount Ararat? Where are the golds? Where is the temple of Solomon that was built with pure gold? You mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find dust of gold? Let me tell you, most of them are still intact. They are buried in the sea because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the hebrew word tohu wa bohu is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments i'm saying all of this to let you know that satan has a history the strength of satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits the strength of satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit are we blessed very quickly keys to long life 
the first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest they all complement themselves you don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go no there are keys there are keys number one the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking choosing releasing words of life Psalm 34 verse 12 to 14 and then we'll look at Proverbs 18 verse 21 Psalms 34 12 to 14 and then Proverbs 18 verse 1 the first key to long life is to speak it the first key to long life is to choose it the first key to long life is to release it hallelujah ready look up let's read psalm 34 verse 12 one to read what man is he that desireth what life and loveth what many days that he may see good read on keep what there is a relationship stop between your tongue its communication and your life the bible says who is he that desire long life it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what speaking guile 14 depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the emphasis is 12 and 13 who is he koinonia that desires long life i don't die yo. the bible says who is he that desires long life don't just laugh about what i'm saying because whether you think you are joking or not the bible says and let it not be said before an angel i made a mistake who is he that wants to activate longevity it says keep the please go to verse 13 13 13, 13. it says keep thy tongue from what and your lips Keep your tongue. I know many of you have said, Kai, people are begged, they are exaggerating. Why do you want to speak? Please be real. You be real in the earth way, you will die like a chicken. Your reality must be the word. It says, I am the way. I am reality. I am absolute reality. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21. can we read proverbs 18 verse 21 one to read what will they eat the fruit of what no 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 it's in your bible it says they that love it shall do what death and life this is Solomon, a man who received wisdom from God. He's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to. And he said, in my exploration of spiritual mysteries, I found something. Death and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit there. hallelujah are you blessed the bible says i set before you this day blessing and cursing is that true death and life here's my suggestion i can't force you but this is my suggestion choose life that you may live not wish it choose life koinonia choose life that you may live are you still a believer? Choose life that you may live. Choose life. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you death and life. But this is my advice for you. Choose life. I speak life. Oh my brother. I speak life 
head and not a tail, you will prevail. I speak like don't give up the fight for your life. Hallelujah. Everybody say after me, I choose life. Outside, can you shout it? I choose life. Those standing at the back, the back there, can you say, I choose life? Don't let the devil tell you, I hope you know what you're saying. Say it. I choose life. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Conquer fear. I choose life. When you speak, you release it. This is a voice activated planet. Nothing happens until sound is released. I choose life send it to the atmosphere i choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow i choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen jesus said behold i jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth i stand at the door of your heart and i keep knocking I cannot enter until your will permits me. As mighty as Jesus is, he respects the will of man. How much more Satan? Jesus, the son of the living God, the resurrected Christ, the eternal one, stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years. If that man refuses, he goes to hell. But he was knocking. So what do you think makes you think that Satan just steps into your heart is called deception. This is the foundation of witchcraft. It paints a picture that is not real. It makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to have wreak havoc in your life. Say it again, I choose life. Say it again, I choose life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? And say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say, did they speak like that? Say, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I choose life. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Write very quickly, everybody. Key number two to longevity. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Biblical key number two to longevity. Under the word fear, write reverence. Reverence. The fear, open bracket, reverence of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 27. Proverbs 10 27. Proverbs 10 27. Everyone read. One to read. The fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence for God. Respect for Him. Honor for Him. And his ways and what he represents prolongs days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The Bible says the fear of the Lord. There are two indexes given in the Bible to measure the fear of the Lord in a man's life. Number one, obedience to his commands. And number two, service in the house of God. Obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the Lord obedience obedience 
Oh, I love him. I obey him. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 to 11. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you. You are everything to me and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Verse 11. For by me days shall be what? And the years of thy life shall be increased. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah. He said go and tell Hezekiah you will not recover from that sickness. You will die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. And said, oh Lord, remember. How I have walked diligently before you. And the Lord sent Isaiah again. He said, uh -uh -uh -uh. I remember my faithfulness. And he went back and said, the Lord said, I have added. For by me, Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied. And the years of his life shall be increased. Obedience and service. When we talk to people about obeying the principles of God, many people think that I can live my life the way I want. Longevity, brothers and sisters, hear me, don't let westernization deceive you. Longevity is tied to your fear of the Lord. Service. There are so many people seated here inside and outside. You're not serving in any unit. You're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture there. You will live to declare. You will live to promote. You will live to frontier his kingdom. Let me tell you this. My passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives. It's to create a sense. My passion is to institutionalize God consciousness in people. To make it an institution. That everything in your life, brothers and sisters, is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda. I don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not. I can tell you an assignment. Start serving diligently in the house of God. Don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of God are just weak people who are desperate for husband. Say, Kai, you serve. Eh? The way you are behaving, don't let anyone cheat you. There are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself hallelujah when five minutes without your breath you are gone it doesn't matter what your agenda is it's over the greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving god that's how you cheat death that's how you cheat the grave that's how you cheat death you don't cheat death by being afraid of it. You cheat death by serving God. Victorious in life and victorious in death. Paul says, for, for me to live is Christ. And if I die, it is still gain. There is no loss. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, the Lord is speaking to you. You are living your life as young as you are. You think you are too busy. There are many of you outside. As you are looking at my face, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight. and saying, you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to. When will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life? Say, I'm not a man of God, I'm a pilot, so what? That my
my life be offered, oh God, on the altar of sacrifice. That I will serve you. I told God, this is all I do with my life. I don't have plan B. When I wake up in the morning, your kingdom come, oh God. That's all I do. Are you getting blessed? Service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for God. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best with all my life. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it as though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands. You go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week. And there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God. There, there's no service for the kingdom. It's not part of their lives. They come and they warm the bench. And smile around. And you tell them, are you serving? Any believer that is not serving in a church. Not serving in a group. Your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom. You don't deserve to live. He says, I shall not die but live. There is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom. God will kill a nation to preserve that man. I travel all the time. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? Tomorrow we are on our way again to be there. All the time. I've seen all varieties of accidents. I've seen all kinds of things. I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations. We have met armed robbers. We were going to, um, when we were going to Ogomosho, our flight was cancelled. We had to charter a car to take us by road. We left about 4.30 in the morning. Just coming out of Abuja, Abaji, going towards, just entering the route to go towards Kogi. And we told somebody reversing, they were armed robbers. Brothers and sisters, this gentleman speaking to you, I'm not a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm educated, but I want to tell you something. The fear of the Lord can prolong the days of a man. That you spend your life serving God. During the days of our fathers, the popular song is, Lord, here am I, send me. Right now we are saying, Lord, here am I. Give me. I have come. I finally arrived to collect. See, let me tell you, don't just laugh. If you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your Christian experience, you will be unfruitful in the kingdom. I want to stand before my maker. I can only imagine what it would be like. Ah, what's the song? You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. That on that day when I stand before him. When we are finally done. And we have conquered the earth. Depopulated the kingdom of hell. And brought, turned the heart of many to righteousness. That through faith after we have subdued kingdoms. 
and wrought righteousness we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation and say lord i am ready and you appear before him to be absent in the body the apostle says is to be present with the lord and he looks at you and says well done you tried and they take on that crown and you see all the matthias saying we watched you all the while while you were in that crusade we watched you while you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils the family in heaven was watching for some of us while you were roaming around gossiping and all that was your passion was oh god husband time is going god said we, we were watching you too i am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came we were in your life a few weeks ago and when we went there the organizer of the the campus crusade when he met me i saw the way he was saluting me and i said i was wondering what was this for and he called me and he said sir about three years or thereabout when you came into this campus i was just a fresh student when i came in and when you preached i got born again I got filled with the Holy Spirit and today I'm still standing and doing many things. Every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people, I say, Lord, thank you. I have no business being known. They don't need to know me that I may decrease. That my face cannot heal anybody. My picture cannot bless anybody. There is one mightier than I. He's the one I live and I spend my entire life serving. Please, I speak to you as a servant of God tonight think about your life think seriously about your life and the way you are ignoring the things of God as though there is something better I'm not saying be a pastor be an addict enough when was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel how many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place how many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God. Not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Impossible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my. There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The psalmist said, better is one day. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm so desperate to serve you. Although I'm a king, I choose to be an usher, a sanctuary keeper, than a celebrity somewhere. These were men who understood God. They understood the ways. There are some of you here, you think you are too big to join the protocol. You are too big to do this. You see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools. Unfortunately, most preachers have preached service, not as a proof of love for God, but as a way to get things from God. It is true that if they obey and serve him, there are benefits. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Beyond getting things, it is a proof of love. So if your work is to bring this water, you bring it with all sense of honor. Not just like you are worshipping a man. Oh, it's a privilege to serve in the house of God. It's a privilege. If you are to clean the chairs, you are cleaning the chairs and say, Lord, it's a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege you can do without me. You have chosen to do with me. You are supposed to bake the cake. You are seated and you know you have grace say no i need to join the welfare department i must spend my life I, I need to contribute you are excellent in graphic oh the media needs me service 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 
whether you are in Zaria or not find a church find a group find a fellowship find a, a congregation of believers many of us are looking for Gio and Mama that's the only condition you have given God to serve him Lord I will serve you if I will be the Mama of the ministry I will serve you if you give me the name of my parish the name of your parish is nothing let it be your passion hallelujah are we getting blessed i'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit because i don't want you to waste your time please get back into the mystery of kingdom service get back you spend your time serving a guy because you love him you go to his house you wash his clothes you cook you iron and he says is it not too much you say this is the least i can do for you is it to express my love i'm i'm, I'm not embarrassed call me a fool it's true Huh? if loving you is a crime let me be a criminal look at what you are saying look at what you are saying shame on any believer who is saying that I'm telling you I say it again shame on any believer that because of mundane things you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God hallelujah Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 Skapaka prondo sopro silia paharatu sufratia Proverbs chapter 3 My son forget not my law but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life together with peace shall they add to thee commandment he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of god his commandments are not burdensome brothers and sisters let's hurry up key number three to long life engaging the mystery of the blood key number three let's hurry up engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding There are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance. Number one. In the book of Exodus chapter 12, it was used to anoint the doorposts and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people. Hallelujah. Number two, Jesus revealed it to us in the communion. The communion. In the New Testament, he began to teach us the mystery of the communion. And then number three, the mystery of what the Bible calls blood sprinkling. That the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30. We may not have time to read all, but let's see how far we can go. Help us, media. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Next verse. He says, after the same manner he took the cup, here and there, 25, 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. Wherefore, whosoever, now listen, shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. Open your eyes, I want to show you a mystery. Unworthily. He says, this sacrament, there are two sacraments that Jesus left to the church. One is the sacrament of the communion. The second is the sacrament of baptism. Water baptism. 
two of them are still valid they are important today it says whosoever shall take up the cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of what the body and the blood of the lord here comes the mystery 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what he can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of jesus christ relieves life and because he's, he's eating it unworthily he will get the opposite of it next verse 30 read please one two read stop for what cause for the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment for this cause how many people how many how many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them have you ever had any death and they told you that ah this death it was communion that killed the man have, is it in your bible for this cause did he say few many many are weak for this cause the cause of not discerning the lord's body the cause of not respecting it for this cause of not giving it the honor it says many are weak you believe the bible right many are what sick and many sleep wow for this cause trivializing the body of christ not discerning the power it can release not discerning that this represents the body of jesus beaten battered by whose stripes we are healed it says for this cause that means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily for that cause you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live Exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we are not going here we don't have the time we have to move on to other things I'm just giving you references Exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death the bible calls it the destroyer that when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel it will leave and trouble you not hallelujah praise the lord key number four honor to parents key number four let's be fast please honor to parents open bracket both physical and spiritual Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3. Honor to parents. Both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life. One to read is projected. One to read. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Verse 3. What's the blessing? That it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy we think i'm a big boy i'm a big girl i'm now married i have children i'm driving a jeep let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father curse your father or your mother let me show you this proverbs 20 20 a grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers read it please one to read his lamb shall be put out in obscure darkness whosoever can dare to cause 
the father and the mother that brought him to the earth now get this i'm not saying that they lead you to partition so as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation no matter what it is look at me david twice had the opportunity to kill saul is that true are you bible students david had the opportunity to kill saul he caught his rope and went away with it he said i will not be the one to kill god's anointed how many times have people run their mouths talking about men of god you sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of god just talking and smiling the bible says honor your father and your mother whether spiritual or physical he said they that rule well among you deserve double honor honor them that rule well when they have proven a life of integrity not human worship not fear but a sense of honor and respect i honor my parents in life and in death hallelujah some of you have elderly people come around you can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say you came late please i don't want anything to inconvenience me you are there shaking your wivon up and down instead of you to stand up and say mama please you can sit down and she say no 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 my daughter insist insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible i'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say i choose to honor my father and my mother how many of you pray for your men of god how many of you pray for ministers you stand there criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal instead of you to get to the place of prayer you stand there saying i always knew i always suspected the way i've been looking at that man you see that continue the bible says he that cursed his father and his mother his lamb his life will be taken away to obscure darkness how many have died as a result of this honor when a father fights his son he loses his honor when a son fights his father spiritual or physical he loses his life that's why many people sadly to say many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries break out and jeopardize the life of the Jew thinking God called them notice very few of them ever last because he that dishonored his father his lamb will be taken are we learning number what now number five walking in wisdom the fifth key to long life walking in wisdom Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16 those outside if you are still with us say amen God bless you alright Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16 walking in wisdom walking in wisdom foolishness can take a man's life foolishness can cut short a man's life walking in wisdom hallelujah the bible says happy is the man that what finds wisdom that means you have to look for it and the man that get it understanding 14 for the merchandise of it are better than silver and the gain thereof than fine gold 15 she is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her 16 length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor if you embrace wisdom it will also open you up to long life look at me how many people do you know who cannot drive hello they cannot drive and then they go and carry a truck and kick it because they are trying to impress their colleagues are you seeing how foolishness costs the life of people and then they go to the road they have given the spirit of death unrestrained access how many people drive their cars foil is leaking down are you getting what i'm saying foil is leaking and they don't care there are people who who transfer is a gallon that is in their car 
or their boss they connect it directly to the carburetor and from the bo from the fuel is feeding the vehicle and they are there running they are smiling how many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal the tire is so it is the, the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight that's the degree to which the car is disaligned and yet he plans to travel to lagos the bible says wisdom is profitable to direct are we blessed a man takes beer alcohol and tells you can i give you a ride he say really you get into the car wisdom you have trusted your life to a foolish man are we getting blessed please how many things do people do go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes directly under your bed is one wire that has been there two years naked wire how many people dry their clothes on naked wires or at least part of it is beginning to cut life wire they dry their clothes and smile they have been doing it I, I know how to do it no 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 I'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives you plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie there are many of us the way you own your car there is something only you know how to touch you touch the wires and then something down you just touch it and it sparks cast, cast, and then the thing starts you've been doing it for many years preserved by mercy you think you are wise god is speaking to you tonight how many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground sparking you will see it sparking and there is foil directly under yet we went to school Is God teaching us wisdom? There are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep fuel. You buy one jerry can of fuel and keep it closed. There are babies there. There are all kinds of things. People are inhaling it. There are others you never eat well. I'm showing you how people partner with Satan to destroy their lives. You never eat well. There's no difference from the day God, you were in poverty and now that God is even helping you. There is no difference. Look at mechanics. Look at what they eat. Same thing. One lady comes with, 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 with a lele or something and serves them. That's what they eat every day, every night. They take tea in the night. See, that kind of unhealthy, that's why the life expectancy level of Africa is about, is it 30 or 40? scientifically proven we're, we're not talking of demons here we're just talking of carelessness say carelessness yes yes people do all kinds of things risky things and we think there is no problem to it very risky things it's only god that can tell the kind of risks people take every day every day there's food on fire you made yam the water is boiling you want to use your hand to carry it out can't you look for spoon if the spoon is missing can't you be patient why must you cut you you came complete why must you go back with one hand yes you will make heaven but is that a rich life is that a rich life why will you cut short your life because of carelessness it's god speaking to us Number six, the sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We're getting deeper now. We're getting to the area where we're going to pray. Luke 10, verse 19. Manda pronda Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold see don't be ignorant i give you power to tread upon serpents upon scorpions and over how many how many all the powers of the enemy he says 
and nothing shall by any means harm you i have given you if you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately he said with wise counsel make war with wise counsel make war i have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just work by default when the spirit of death is in an environment what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity this is the standard operation there are a few exemptions however but the standard way the spirit of death the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey are you getting what i'm saying now Let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic. A subtopic under point six, the reality of witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft. I just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 proverbs 1 11 and then psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here Give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. Let's hurry up. Everyone read. Want to read. There shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what? Pass through fire. Or that uses divination. Or an observer of times. An enchanter. Or a witch. Next verse. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. God himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world. There are enchanters. There are stargazers. There are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men. The church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of satan nahum chapter 3 verse 4 just look up so that um since it's projected one to read because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot the what mistress of witchcraft that sell what look at what she sells she can she look at her goods the way you sell pure water the mistress of witchcraft and say you can come and meet me and i will give you africa i can give you this village i can sell that soul to you it's in your bible it says she sells what nations through her wardom her fraternity with human beings that means human agents come to meet her I want access to a territory. And what does she sell again? Families. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? That there are witchcraft activities that sell families. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23. It's a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? All right, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes and make what? Handkerchiefs. What version is this? Okay, it's okay. Upon the head of every stature. Hey, let me show you what the Bible is saying. 
Where's my handkerchief? They sew pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what? To do what? To hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men. They take on a handkerchief, put it on a statue and call your name. It's in your Bible. They have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you. That is a nice word. For as long as you just say, God, I'm here and I love you. Everything is all right. Welcome to planet Earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival. They hunt souls. He said, will ye hunt the souls of my people? They are hunting. They are everywhere. Let me tell you. Especially for Africa. Please don't pretend like you are coming from the Caribbean. You were born an African. You belong to an African family. And you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of God. We don't need to go through this. But for now, we must pay that price. Are you there? Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Next verse. Let's look at it quickly. And will ye people. Oh, and will ye what? Me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread. To slay what? Read that part. To slay the souls that should not die. To slay souls that should not die. And to do what? To save the souls that are alive. The mystery of spiritual exchange. That a man will see that his time is here. Because the wicked shall be cut short. And he will say in my place. I invoke this and I donate this person. Die in my stead. It was an ancient practice that king used. When they were about to kill them. They killed their children. And an indignation rose and the war ended. It's still being practiced today. Men who give others for their lives. I prophesy to you any man that invokes your name on any altar as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives they will carry their dead body from that altar I say it again in the name of the Lord Jesus that any charm any altar that invokes your name to die the death of another may my God visit them with judgment Next, next verse. Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls, to make them fly. Watch this. Look at the mystery of witchcraft. And I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt, to make them fly. When verse what now? Two verses left. Your handkerchiefs, I will also tear your instruments of divination those those mediums that you use in covens that you flip and call the names of people and somebody is walking peacefully on the street all of a sudden somebody comes with a knife and kills him and they say he just died no sir he did not just die an invocation happening in the realm of the spirit And deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen. amen and they shall know that I am the Lord your God let's read 22 because I can't read all those ones whom I have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at this guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life i prophesy to you again oh lord god of israel i speak that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations i declare in the name of jesus christ may those ovens catch fire may those covens tonight catch fire may those covens catch fire Proverbs 1 verse 11 Proverbs 1 verse 11 Watch this 
if they say come with us let us lie and wait for what let us do what let us wait for blood let us lock privately for the innocent without cause meaning they did not do anything but we desire their blood so we are waiting let's wait for the day that they want to take a step let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit the whole world lieth in wickedness if you are yet to be aware be aware this night write the following scriptures down we may not have time to read them but this is the lot of the wicked this is what god will do with wicked people okay let's look at one of them micah chapter 5 verse 12 but one other scripture you will write this is the lot of witchcraft psalms 109 verse 17 to 18 just write that we won't read it let's read micah chapter 5 verse 12 when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i was amazed one to read and shout amen after you read it one to read He said i will cut off witchcraft i will cut it off because if i don't cut it off they will cut short your life so i will cut it off is god helping us but i mean number seven quickly there are eight points i'm giving you seven activating the ministry of angels the seventh key to long life activating the ministry of angels hebrews 1 14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry and jesus said unto her say yet i am not unto thee listen that if thou wouldest believe he says thou shouldest see the glory of god have i not said to you that if you believe you will see that if you believe you will see there is a relationship between your faith and your experience listen very carefully it's just an exhortation tonight that if you believe you will see that means whether you see the glory of god or not it is still there hmm. whether you receive the breakthrough or not the breakthrough is there whether it will be featured in your life is a different thing altogether are we together now whether you have a car or not there there are still cars in in a showroom now as we talk is that true whether you you have a house or not there are still houses empty and available so it's one thing for that reality to be available but it's another thing for that reality to become your experience are we together everything we so desire brothers and sisters is available in christ it's a reality in the realm of the spirit but there are systems in the kingdom that can capture that reality and make it your experience here and now that reality does not bless you for as long as it remains in the realm of the spirit your prayer and your desire is that the word becomes flesh so that it dwells among us then we can behold the glory for as long as it is still in the realm of the spirit it doesn't profit you what good is it if you keep having dreams and see yourself rising and then it never manifests open doors in the dreams close doors in your experience lifting in the spirit or whatever visions you're having but in the physical nothing seems to happen the bible says if thou wouldest believe 
you will think this is a very little expression if you will believe truly it says you will see my god that means i can stand here desiring a lot of things in my life and god is saying all those things that look far you can the word see here does not just mean view it uh -uh. it means capture it let it be your experience if you will believe believe and second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 guides us on the dimensions of believing second chronicles 2020 and here's what it says jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem two believings here the first belief notice is a big b believe in the lord your god that's the first dimension of your believing believe in the lord your god to believe in the lord does not just mean to agree that he's alive mm -mm. to believe in the lord your god number one means to be convinced and convicted about who god really is and what he's able to do you don't just sit down and casually believe believe is a product of of a contemplation that happens in your spirit by the way let me advise you for a very long time we preachers have been telling people that believing just happens in your spirit believing must happen in your spirit your mind and your body the entire tripartite nature of man is involved in believing i guarantee you believe alone with your spirit you will never get anything your mind needs to get to that state too your body needs to participate it's a well-meaning teaching but it's not a complete teaching you believe god spirit soul and body because your entire tripartite nature has a role to play in the manifestation of the promises of god for you believe in the lord your god notice he didn't say believe in jesus in fact he didn't say believe in god believe in the lord when the bible uses the word lord is a very interesting expression because the, the word lord there means is, is from the word adon it means master it means owner it means manipulator are we together yes believe in the lord your god get to a point by the spirit where you are convinced that he's not scamming you get to a point where you are convinced it's a point of unbendable persuasion that you believe that if god says he's going to change my family truly he will it's amazing how many action movies we act in church you will think we really believe god but we don't some of you as you are seated right now if i ask you do you believe god can change your life you will say yes just because your head was nodding up and down doesn't mean you believe are we together now it's a revelation man of god do you believe in the anointing yes i believe but it's not true because it's not showing the bible says if you believe you will see that means if you are not seeing there is something wrong with that believing are you getting what i'm saying you have to find a way of believing this conviction conviction that the spirit brings that you have gotten to a point of unbendable persuasion that everything god has said concerning my life now regardless of whether that experience listen you don't believe it when it manifests it should be obvious when it manifests you believe it to make it happen not because it has happened it is your faith that will transport that reality from the realm of the spirit I sit down and just tell you, oh, someone is going to shout for instance under the anointing. That's a stupid thing. What if it doesn't happen? So what is the, what, what gives that audacity? It's suicidal for a man of God. Your, your reputation and your ministry is at stake. You don't get up and just start speaking and saying things and talking nonsense. I hope you know if it doesn't happen people will say you see this is how proud people end but there is a level of conviction 
conviction. Are we together now? If I tell you, Sam, to walk and come to me, it is because you trust your legs. Are we together? If I ask someone on a wheelchair to stand up and walk to me, that person does not trust his legs yet because of the obvious situation. So he won't stand up and he would try. But if I ask you to come now, you are not, you don't have any experience with your legs that should disturb you. You must get to that point of persuasion. You see, God is not a politician. God was not voted into power. It's not like there is somebody that supervises him in heaven. He does not have a disciplinarian. Nobody rebukes him. Listen carefully. We are talking about the God of the universe. We are not talking about the God of Christians. We are talking about the God of all flesh. God is not a Christian. He is the father of light. The owner, it belongs to him. God will not come on earth and go to the camp of Christians. The whole earth is his own. Whether you believe in him or not, you face the consequence of fighting the creator. But he is the God of all flesh. Has thou not heard? Has thou not seen? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't get tired. doesn't get weary. So when that God looks at you, with the same power of creation and says i want to change your life then we now sit down and say oh god that's exactly what my director told me and god said you have brought me in the same category with your director who is only 45 years old you know how old i am go and find out if age gives ability god still qualifies to be god even if it's just by age Let's assume that the older you are, the more powerful you are. God is still God by that reference. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Get to a point of persuasion and say, Lord, based on my calculation, it will take five years for my family to get this miracle. But there's something I know about you. That when you decide to rend the heavens and step over a man's situation, one month becomes too much. You see, listen, as you are hearing what I'm saying, you are saying amen. But something within me is saying, you are not apostle. Don't make a fool out of yourself. Are we together now? If a Jimmy is a landlord of an estate and you are trusting God to save 30 million to buy a house and he looks at you, and assuming you didn't know he was a landlord, he just says, Kai, I want to bless you. And someone just whispers to you and says, that's the landlord. The awareness that he's a landlord does something. You say, ah, sir, good afternoon. I, I'm not even, because you are aware. Something just opened you up to the potentials in him that he can compress a 10 years journey in a moment. This is the God I serve. The Bible says the word of God is quick. Shout quick not slow it may look slow until god decides to shake himself and say now let me lift kenny now let me lift this and you are surprised even you the benefactor there are sides to the equation of greatness no man can explain it's a mystery you just know i prayed i did this from a to b to c i don't know what happened there i just know that a finger manipulated this are we together believe in the Lord many believers don't believe God many believers it has to be in this order believe in the Lord your God believe what about him believe that he is God you can believe he's a deity that's not the information required for your greatness you can believe that he's not a man Satan too is not a man many other spirits too are not men so there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man. You must believe that he's the mighty God. And you must believe in his ability. I don't know how to make you see this. Look, let me tell you, when you focus on God and who he is and his might, you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him. 
and then you will be brought to a point where you will agree lord you can change my life i believe lord you can wipe my tears there are many faithless people just because they are holding their bibles and speaking what is written there they think they believe no it's a conviction lord i trust you lord i believe you that's why he left us the word of god to help us believe him the word of god is a commitment from god to you is 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 a manifesto is to give you room to vet him that means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him he still leaves the word are we together believe in the lord your god by doing so you shall be established so he says be convinced and convicted about who god is and what he's able to do second timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says but i know whom i have believed he says i am persuaded that he is able i am persuaded that he is able hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says for without faith it is impossible to please god listen he says for he that cometh to god like you have come now he says you must come believing that he exists and then that he is a rewarder let me see how many of you came from far if you came from far let me see your hands how many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming now do you think please drop your hands thank you do you think that God will watch you live wherever you heard the, someone came from Ghana someone came from Maiduguri so within and outside this nation people coming there are many people connecting from around the world do you believe if you were God will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident and for 12 hours come and sit down some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon or two or three and then as God you sit down and then say okay share the grace may God bless you I don't know the God you gave your life to but the one I gave my life to is a serious God it's a very serious God we are used to people playing games with our lives God is not just a trustworthy God he is too serious that he gave his son to die and then he will play games with your life no sir he's a rewarder he's a rewarder let me tell you something you've heard me say it if you ever find yourself coming here to koinonia that you are right here safely alone is a sign that half of your challenges have gone um, now uh, you would think i'm saying it just because i'm the man of god here you decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise money that you are saving will disappear all of a sudden oh, every to some of you the morning to come you are not even yet sure whether you will come it's a spirit believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god sister believe in the lord your god my brother believe in the lord your god concerning your admission believe in the lord your god concerning the baby i know it's five years but believe in the lord your god believe concerning god turning your life around you need more than a job you need breakthrough you need favor if you get a job of fifty thousand, you are still backward because you should have been working for the past 10 years so now the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100 thousand that god can you shift my what would have been the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my september and wait for me there that i can enter september and I, I, it will look as if september is 10 years put together One of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time. Read your Bible and see what God did with time when it was time to visit people. He made the sun to stand still. He made the sun to go backward. Are we together? He did something to time. 
when you lose time you have lost everything believe in the lord your god number two please let's go back to um, second chronicles he said believe in his prophets listen carefully his prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies his prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake that means someone who is real that's not what he's talking about he said believe his prophets so shall ye prosper to prosper means to do well he says believe his prophets his prophets are not just people who prophesy his prophets are not just real men of god <clears throat> listen carefully this is where we miss it you must learn this his prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of god it has nothing to do with maybe someone being real his prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um come sam come darling look at this i'm elijah and i'm going to the house of a widow of Zarephath. Are we together? Don't you think on my way going, I'm going to meet other people who have problems? So I meet a gentleman who has a problem and I just greet him. How are you? Where is the house of the widow of Zarephath? He's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because I'm not sent to him. I'm a prophet. I probably met other widows. Elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said, Oh dear, you mean it? You mean this how your life is? Sorry, eh? And he kept going. The same way Jesus saw 10 lepers. The same way Jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go. There is a man sent to you. There is an anointing sent to you. Listen, I know that many people will not like me for what I'm telling you. Not every anointing can bless you generally speaking by opening your heart i mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny it's true hear what i'm telling you and then god will bless you there is an anointing a portion there is a grace designated let me tell you happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you do you know let me tell you this and i tell you this honestly my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people but i have met people in my life that i just prayed for them just for praying sake but i knew in my spirit i wasn't sent to them of course you won't tell them so they don't feel bad but you know but i've seen others I could even wait for them to share their challenges because I know, I know. The anointing sent to you. So believe his prophets. Are we together? There were many widows in Zarephath. Elijah was looking for just one. Habba prophet. What of other women? <clears throat> I love them. I can pray, I can intercede. May God bless you. Do A, B, and C. But I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath. Where is she? Finally, you find her. And his clash is not even ready for you. She's doing something else. The prophet would have been angry to say, I spent time to come here. You don't even know what you are missing. I'm on my way going. But because he was sent, he had to stay. His assignment was to change her life. When you find the anointing, and the prophet that God has sent over your life and your situation, let me tell you, you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the, as if Satan does not exist. It's, it's not just, this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say, the most important thing is God. Yes, you are right, but you are wrong. The most anointing is anointing. What is there? What is so special about this man of God? This is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of god is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes like a messenger angel gabriel 
left other believers around earth and was directed to one person daniel all that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies he would have been angry to say i'm going to someone else mm -mm. he said daniel i am come to give you understanding are you the only one i am come to give you understanding jesus is appearing by the road saul is on his way to damascus brothers and sisters the bible says there were other people with saul god would have been fair enough to at least give them something and then he isolates one person and discusses with the person the rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down they just got up to clean themselves and say kai now well, what is all this one now whereas one person has that encounter sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated i know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the results you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naman go to jordan watch seven times J naman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and a small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your lepros two scriptures and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. It says, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and also what his servant Moses God performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed 
God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, look up please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. That means, I can talk to you without the cloud. But I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. It says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately. Readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now i said i am amazed at how people in africa and nigeria trivialize success i am shocked at how people um believe that success is about luck it's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like i think these people are just fortunate is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. 
the anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his that gentleman you see that now someone will tell you i was sitting and i had a dream how about those who buy new phones brand new phones brand new phones and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside how do you explain that a new phone not new uh, what they call that thing not new memory card i'm not talking about new memory card a new phone that you bought it tear rubber you are the one who opened it then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question who who now who, how do you explain that listen listen we live in a world that is not natural it only manifests the spiritual naturally the, the 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 earlier you got this the better my brothers and my sisters hear me all that you see in this world is only a reflection say reflection the real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory nothing happens that is physical are we together one of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight among the many miracles we desire is finance oh nigerians finance you want to talk a good news to any honest nigerian right now in this day and age as we transit into the ember month no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore that other one just even if it's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough many people are working and they are trusting god for breakthrough and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen i'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh I, I didn't plan to say this but ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something may god give somebody deliverance right now read it read it one to read for wisdom is a defense uh-huh and money is a defense just stop there so we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense now look up when the bible says you have a weapon what is a weapon something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He says it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way a human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says believe is prophets there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this this is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you 
and he can live no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal so if you ever see this looking for anybody naira does not look for men something makes it come i please are you getting what i'm saying if you can understand this alone at least even if you don't know how it comes you already know that it doesn't come by itself these are the mysteries that surround our kingdom you ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom my brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together? most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we're sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal That you're sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure it's a master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus god is not equal to two it's not even equal to ten thousand is equal to any answer that god puts there so one plus one can be equal infinity god said so are we together now i'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that god is able to do anything at all when you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. 
I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment. Say, Satan, go away. And before the presence of God, tomorrow is too far. God can, how many minutes does it take to do a transfer? I believe him. Yes, I do. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. I believe he can change my life. In one minute, I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight. Go ahead. Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. 
my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray i don't know what has happened to me i cry for help hallelujah one more prayer point lord i believe you and i believe your servant i believe that anointing and i believe in its ability to turn my life around walk on any unbelief in my heart oh god and take it out tonight go ahead and pray every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive i've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you jesus christ let me give us one last prayer point father every desire i brought here tonight I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Every desire.
visit me oh god completely the god who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too the god who touches my body can touch my womb too lord i insist i insist for completeness comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it, it's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone, it's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, I'm praying again. The angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed, shalakato sadakata. Now listen, 
fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of jesus i'm stretching my hands right now spirit of the lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of jesus i declare that any operation that is not of god at the count of three by the mystery of the holy ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, blow, blow, blow like a mighty. Spirit of victory, 
Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is this the is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around and it will surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give you a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, oh dear, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I am praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter congratulations listen and I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough listen let me tell you except God is not God if this anointing that I'm seeing touches you then you and your family must stand here and testify I'm stretching my hands right now Lord you are showing me this in the name of Jesus this is a symbol of breakthrough I stretch my hands Every family and every person that must receive of this grace. I'm stretching my hands now. Father, 
you must testify i release upon you that grace you must testify i declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion i command it i declare it i decree it. in the name of jesus i command it i decree it i declare it right now in the mighty name of jesus christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of jesus christ i stretch my hands right now and i declare it's time for your family to rise i'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and i decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family i command that is gone now in the name of jesus it is gone i curse the power of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity and there are many of you there is no grace on the works of your hands i look and in the spirit i don't see the blessing of the lord working that's what is responsible for hardship it's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this but in the name of jesus i stand representing the spirit of god and i stretch my hands back to you i'm declaring still that ministry of fire many of you will be surprised whatever it is you are involved in god is about to bring grace upon it i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of god come through your hands into your life lord i pray in the name of jesus whatever has not been working in your life i force it to work right now receive that anointing i force it to work now inside outside i force it to work now those following online i pray and i speak whatever it is that you are doing i declare the blessing i activate the blessing upon the work of your hand i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. the lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ hallelujah this the prayer is for everybody eh? but this particular prayer now is for ladies the lord is showing me destinies that must be changed outwardly you are beautiful you are good looking you are virtuous you are wonderful but in the realm of the spirit is not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in this in the realm of the spirit 
A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called Beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus i change it now in the name of jesus listen a man's destiny can be exchanged it's true have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you but i want to pray for you sir god is going to turn your life around uh, you see this prayer that i'm saying generally this prayer sir is for you you are a shadow of your life of your is your dad where did he come from from high in the from high in the from high in the daddy i'm going to pray for you this is not just about your leg huh this is about your destiny i want to pray for you hold my hands sir. father in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare in the name of Jesus anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir i decree and declare a restoration now you are the daughter hold my hands i pray for you look at me you are a wonderful lady huh but bad things continue to happen in your life huh you are a nice lady are you married i'm married well with that one. don't worry i know why i'm saying you get what i'm saying now yes, sir. because what i'm seeing this is a spirit you are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil, you are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good evil spoken of you can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you you bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this i pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say i'm the one who is not spiritual it's a spirit 
my dear i want to pray for you huh? this thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong you are a wonderful lady huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do you sir. do i'm working in a security you are a security yes sir. did you go to school yes sir. i'm running my master you are running your masters yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying, put this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father who said this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you demonic work that closes you everywhere i decree and declare i stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace if you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny i take you out of that place and i shift you to the place of destiny i shift i shift you in the spirit i shift you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sent your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job that on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man if you gain the what is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again in the name of Jesus. May my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives they were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons let me tell you this it matters that god meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you the devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life there are many nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by god to be in this country you see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad. 
and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies and see Nigerians. They want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you didn't write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it. You can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside. We'll walk to your projector stand. Overflow two. You'll also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three. Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourselves very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down, while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing.
in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jex Ejimi there, um, Pastor Alpha Benga Overflow 1, Pastor Femi Promise Overflow 2. Please, quickly, quickly, let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now. Fresh. 
Oppression is lifting, shackles are breaking. Heaven touches earth in this place.
Stretch your hands, we are praying on this request. Shalabaka ruta sabre dege dege tabala daba. Nataka parakato shada bre dege tebele Father, let your people return with testimonies. Ha shalagata bre dege daba rakato sada bre dege dech. In the cross sazia saha sabara kato shabre dege tabala daba. Rakata branda gada bala dabosh. E pratos kada brandi gedi bala dabosh. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Scriptures talk Father, we give you praise. About a blessed Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that are bounds. Father, we give you praise for there's nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthrough. 
breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any requests to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season If you are a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah. I decree and declare, may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every family represented here. 
in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to it that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying please believe it with all your heart I pray for every student here I don't know what challenge you may be having or I don't know what you are trusting God for in the name of Jesus I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them I don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again let it be done to move you There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now.
anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it i say it again if that vehicle is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash i pray for your finances again that in the name of jesus the worship team sang here and said ebenezer there is a god that can help men i pray for you directly finance that's the prayer i'm praying for you now i know you love god already i'm not doubting your passion for god but the resources that it will take especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now he said keep us lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil i pray for you any orchestration of evil a trap of satan so that you will enter and it will destroy your life quarter to getting into that trap i declare in the name of jesus may the lord rescue you out of it two or three more prayers and we're done any friend in your life any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually destiny wise financially i caught it from the realm of the spirit this night i ate it out of your life in the name of jesus let me tell you there is a saying show me your friends and i will show you your destiny some of us love god but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend you are born again but the people that come to like you to want to marry you are people who don't love god or you are a nice well-meaning brother but your friend is an arm robber your friend is a 419er your friend what any kind of wrong relationship whether you are aware or not in the name of jesus i'm speaking to you let there be a separation right now and i pray for you if there is any deceiver in your life may my god expose them in this city. i know you don't like the prayer but let me pray for you if there is any deceiver in your life i say it again may the god of heaven expose them in this city. whatever has tampered with your love for god there is something called first love first love is fire fire for god fire for the house of god that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said i was glad not i was angry not i was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of god is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of god that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the antichrist i declare fresh passion for the things of god fresh passion for the house of god you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media 
all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to his rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m you are signing poverty with your destiny both god and satan agree that laziness leads to suffering are we together there are many of us here I, I don't hate you you know i love you with all my heart but your deliverance needs to be laziness 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 i'm not as concerned about our sisters but this our brothers you are the ones i'm talking to Sis, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping <laughs> believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here Born of God, you return back home and there's no food. And they are asking you and you are acting as if that they have not paid school fees. Say, what will I do? Is he responsible? Is he responsible? Before you have a child, think and plan. What are we going to do with this child that is coming? Not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people. In the name of Jesus, I declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible. I release it upon you now. every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success i cancel that wrong mentality now yeah. hallelujah we speak peace over zaria yeah. we speak peace over kaduna state yeah. and we speak peace over this nation yeah. We decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere, we declare that Christ must be glorified in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for all of you who are doing one thing or the other, whether job, whether ministry, whatever it is, I declare multiplication of results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before we take the altar call, I want to encourage you, please listen, please listen. Everyone, next week, Friday, next week, we're going to have Koinonia on Sunday. It's, 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 it's our SOM graduation, we'll announce that shortly. But on Friday, please listen, we're all waiting upon the Lord, we're fasting, okay? There's no Koinonia, so we're going to trust God, please. When we say wait upon the Lord, minimum, minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast I have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting 
and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now and then the third you can add whatever prayer point but particularly our spiritual lives and then you are praying for the ministry and you know prayer band take note of this and all other departments take note every department should allocate some time at least that you can pray hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you